it's time for Talk Stay. Hello, one of us, me, Shaun of the Dead, with our top ten ladies in gaming. Oh, yeah. Yes, we've got top ten ladies in gaming, and joining me to talk about that his top ten, and my top ten, of course, is my best old buddy, Chris Sumner. Yep. Yeah, me yeah. again. You didn't think to get an actual woman on this show to give an interesting no. insight. No, I, I, do, I have no women. <laughs> <laughs> Even not. my I'm woman's glad... not interested. <laughs> yeah, your fiancé, I'll be happy to hear that. Yeah, no, she's not interested whatsoever. I, I think she couldn't even name one. Um, but yeah, Tetris. it was an interesting <laughs> experiment coming up with our top ten uh, women in gaming because I found it surprisingly easy. In fact, I had I found too it many. Really hard. I found it hard because the thing is, I wanted to choose ones that I liked, obviously, and ones that I played as. And you know, because I didn't want to pick a get one from a game I've never played as because I wouldn't really know her. Um, so yeah. it's not. So my top ten's built around games I've played and what, Same you know, here. why I like them. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 an interesting list. It's I think it's the first of many. Of course, you started um, uh, sympathising for Anita Sarkeesian, didn't you? Because there weren't enough women to choose from in the medium. <laughs> I was sympathising with her, <laughs> but I'm not but keen, yeah, I'm not like, keen on it. I think there should be more uh, female characters in games. Yes, but I could never sympathise with a woman who claims that men like to kill women in video games, especially in games like Hitman, and then drag them around. Because I've never seen anyone do that except for her. <laughs> so yeah, she's got problems. A bit, yeah, she's got, the, she, she makes some interesting accusations, that lady. But and also, she's going to be in a video heads. game. Might as well oh. keep talking. She is going to be in a video game, though. She's going to be in Towerfall, of all games. A game where the objective is to riddle the other player with arrows. So, <laughs> there you go. Fun. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's so many to choose from. There's certain characters that I've omitted from this list, just on technicalities. Like, I didn't add Commander Shepard as a female, because Commander Shepard isn't always a female. Sometimes she's nah. a man. And I didn't add Zelda, because as cool as Zelda is, she's the re-embodiment of a goddess, she's dressed as a pirate, she's dressed as a ninja, she can fire a bow. It's not always the same Zelda game to game, it's different descendants see, or different see, reincarnations. See, my Zelda has only ever been Zelda from Ocarina of Time. I have no idea she ever been a pirate before. That's crazy. Oh yeah, Wind Waker. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, oh, I've actually got Wind Waker, so I'll have to get to that point. Uh, but yeah, that's the only one I've more or less played. So yeah, so that's, that's okay. Anyway, well, why don't, so why we're going to start. Stuff off? We're going to start with <laughs> my number ten. Is well, I know Kasumi, Hitomi, I am, you know those dead alive girls. Um, <laughs> great start, no, actually, great no, start. They, we respect they these kick, women. I respect these women. Even though Techno Carry have a wonderful way of uh, actually creating their women with the most bounciest boobies you could imagine. <laughs> <laughs> they they get incre- it's almost like do you remember when Lara Croft uh, in the first Tomb Raider was fine and as she progressed in each game her you know bra size constantly increased it seems like that same happening with Dead or Alive uh, a game that started off which was like you know the competitor for Tekken you could say which uh, had some which was actually a good fighting game as well I think. Dead or Alive 4 was the, one of the games I played on Xbox 360 when uh, 360 first launched. And it was one of my favourite fighting games. It was absolutely brilliant. And I really enjoyed playing those games. And I think I mainly play, played as Kasumi, Hitomi and Ayan. They were the characters I played as the most. Uh, was it Ayan or An? I don't, actually don't know how you pronounce the name because it's all in Japanese half the time. So Take I her off guess. the list. <laughs> Take her off the list because I can't pronounce the name. It's Ayan or An. I don't know. Well, Hitomi and Kasumi are cool, uh, and yeah, they're the ones I mainly play as. Well, I like the Dead or Alive games. I don't know if you've ever played them, uh, but they are good fighting games. I, I would, I know it's a bit faster than like Tekken. I think Tekken can be a bit too slow for me, and that's why there's no Tekken female characters on my list. They're all from, they're, mm-hmm. just from Dead or Alive. So yeah, that's one. That's my number ten. I do like those Dead or Alive girls, and I do like the games. But I do think that Techno Curry need to dial it back just a little bit. Um, you know the whole let's just release constant schoolgirl uniform DLC packs and things like that. It's a bit strange, but you know some people are into that, and um, you know more power to them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my that's not my that's my that's my ten. There you go, your turn. <laughs> my number ten 
going in a completely different route from yours, I think she's someone who will appear on your list. I've picked Ellie from The Last of Us. Oh, she's my number six. She's at number ten. Oh my god, why? Oh <laughs> uh, well, technically she's not really a woman. She's just a young girl. Um, but she was just a fantastic mm. character, rather than other but characters she, that you just she, mentioned. She's a woman before she can be a girl, Chris. She ne- she she can't be a girl. You can't be a little girl in a world like that. You have to mature so fast. So yeah, that's my good argument. point. But yeah, um, <laughs> the fact that you were talking about uh, the girls from Dead or Alive on your list, I mean, you liked it you enjoyed playing those games and you thought they were quite strong women. But this isn't someone who's defined by how how nicely they've modelled the body or how physically tough she is. It's, it's yeah. more a, a, a testament to the character why she's on the list. She's tough, she's resourceful, she's funny. Um, she... And- my, minor spoiler she's immune from this virus that's affected everyone else that's kind of the driving force of the it's game it's been out for f- freaking nearly three years two years now it's tough. yeah she's unique <laughs> but the, she's got a sense of humour she's someone that you actually grow to care about rather than yeah. Lara Croft uh, as influential as Lara Croft's been she's not in my list anywhere because who cares about her really what Lara Croft yeah Oh, we'll get to that later. But oh, okay. I like, I like, I like, I like her character arc. I like her character arc uh, in Last of Us. You know, from when you first meet her and how you do bond with Ellie in the game. Because um, like she was my number six, I actually really enjoyed her having her around. Like she was, she didn't feel like a hindrance. You know, like Ashley felt in Resident Evil Four, where she pissed yeah. her off constantly. She, had, yeah, Ellie didn't feel like that, and that's why I liked her. And she, she, I'm playing as her in that moment in the game where things happen. Uh, it, was, it was, you know, some really like intense stuff, and I think they, they you know, Ro- Naughty Dog just just did a great job, really. So yeah, um, but she earned a place. Yeah, mine all six. She had, yeah, she was cracking, cracking character, cracking character. Okay, well that's our number ten. So it's time for number nine. my number nine, Chris. Yes, yeah. she's she's, a, she's she's an old character, been yeah. around a bit. She has. She's 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 actually married. Okay, okay, She's classy married, lady. Yeah. yeah, classy lady, classy lady. She actually had to save a husband once as well. From, okay. From four, from four ghosts. It's Ooh. Mrs. Pac-Man! Mrs. Mrs. Pac-Man, Chris! <laughs> Mrs. Pac-Man! Oh. Is, yes, yes, what, the one the one, la- the one lady of gaming everyone forgets! Mrs. Pac-Man has been around for a long time. <laughs> and people always... Well, no, 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 they, she won't be on many people's top ten ladies of gaming lists, I bet you. No, I think, I think because she's a the, strong, independent woman, right? I think, yeah, because if anyone does have a man, yeah. <laughs> if anyone's she, played the arcade cabinets, I think Miss Pac-Man was slightly more popular than the original Pac-Man because mm. it was the sequel, so they knew it, there was a popularity there, so they made yeah. more machines. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely yeah. made a lot more money than standard Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man. I, I loved, I loved the little cut scenes they had where they met together and they, they fell in love and then they lost each other and they, you know, and it's, just, <laughs> it's a beautiful. I tell you what, the, the love story between Mrs. Pac-Man. I don't know how there's not a book about it, how there's not a movie about it or anything. That love story, better love story than Twilight. I tell you now, Mrs. Pac-Man is my number nine, Chris. And she's, okay. a, she's a cracker. She's a, she's a lovely looking lass as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, she's she's held up over the over the decades. She still looks as good as ever. <laughs> okay, my number nine. You said you had absolutely no Tekken characters on your list. I actually have one. This is the only character from a fighting game on my list, and I Panda. think you can guess who it is. No, not Panda. Uh, well, oh, it not is Panda. Nina Williams. Nina, Nina Williams, Williams, the that only one female that had her own character. Video game? Yeah, the only female character to appear in all the Tekken games. And oh, yeah. the only character in the entire franchise to get a spin-off. It wasn't a fighting game, it was a spy intrigue game, Death by Degrees, the Nina Williams game. And, well, that's just oh, a record. And it's yeah. the fact that she was able to bust out of a franchise with so many big characters uh, yeah. and stand on her own. It didn't do that well, but it's more the statement that the game made. And the fact that... Yeah, the fact that she's in all the Tekken games. She's got interesting character relationships. Like, uh, I remember when you completed the game as her, you unlocked her sister, Anna. And they had a good storyline going between the games, how they absolutely hated each other and were both assassins and were both constantly trying to kill each other. 
And the fact yeah, that yeah. this character was such a badass that um, they thought we want to carry that line on, and they uh, they gave her a son, Steve Fox. Obviously, part of the story, she was in cryogenic uh, sleep at the time. She wasn't aware she was getting pregnant, and she was kind of used. Horrible. Um, but <laughs> the fact that there's an, a son out there making a name for himself in the world of tech and uh, carrying on her like kind of legacy is impressive. She's a mother. How many mothers are on your list, Sean? How many mothers? Uh, I'll let you know I've got at least two more. Uh, you got to respect women. They can't all be these beach volleyball girls. Mrs. Mrs. Pac-Man might have had kids, I don't know. (laughs) 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 I'm not too sure how they reproduce. Yeah, yeah. how many mothers in gaming are there? That's an interesting one. Uh, No, I don't. Actually, I couldn't really tell you any. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, good one. But that's Nina, was it? At number Nina nine. Williams. Nina Williams at number nine. Had her own spin off and been all the Tekken games. Lovely, jubbly. Okay, well, it's time for number eight. And my number eight, Chris. Yep. It's Claire Redfield. Yep. Yep. Claire Redfield from Resident Evil. I like Claire. She's great. Great character. I, uh, you know, like. He didn't think it could get any better than Jill Valentine. It did. It, it, we got Claire Redfield, which I think I like more than Jill Valentine now. Uh, I mean, because which games has re- she been in? She was introduced in two. She was in Code Veronica. She was in uh, yeah. six. She's, she's, she's in Code Veronica six. She's in Revelations two, which is just yeah. out. Which literally has come out today on the twenty fifth. Uh, so that's out today. I haven't played it yet, but I do want to. Uh, obviously, she's been in the movies as well, the CGI created ones, and I think yeah. there was a Claire Redfield yeah. character in one of the bloody action films that they made. You know what? The uh, CG one wasn't that bad. The one at the airport, I forget what it was called, Degeneration. Yeah. That was yeah, actually pretty it wasn't good. Too bad. Reminded me of the old cutscenes in the games, to be honest. And you know uh, what? She yeah. she kind of connects to a lot of the other characters as well. She's got a strong friendship with Leon. She's Chris's yeah. sister, whereas other characters just kind of drop in and drop out of that world but she she's a yeah. strong character with some strong relationships so yeah I can see why she's on the list yeah she's very likeable I enjoyed playing as her through Resident Evil 2 um a campaign in Resident Evil 6 wait sure who did she team up in 6 uh, she was it with was Wesker's her, her. son no no that was uh, that no, wasn't that her that was another girl was she in 6 I don't think she was in 6 I don't oh, think she was in 6 I'm an idiot no <laughs> I'm trying. Well, I'm she's really st- thinking she's that. still there. Code I like Veronica. I like. I like it. She was going to Code Veronica. She was calling and the relationship with Steve and things like that. That was pretty cool. And then she ends up having to kill Steve. Unfortunately, <laughs> how, how, how unfortunate! No one wanted to kill Steve for that entire game, did they? No. Uh, no. Uh, but yeah, that was Claire. I liked her. She was a good character I, and one of the you know first female characters I really enjoyed playing as. And that's why she's on my list, just because I really enjoyed having, you know, her story in her in Resident Evil games. That's it, okay. Really. <laughs> yeah, number eight, Chris. What's yours? <laughs> my number eight. Okay, well, my number eight technically isn't a woman. She's not even isn't a human. A woman. Not even a human. But it's a dog. She's she's decidedly female, and that is, of course, Glados from Portal One and Two. Oh, uh, oh, Gla- oh, shit. Glados! Yeah. Oh, quick, I'm going to delete someone off my list. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did yeah. forget about her. Because she's, technically she's voice. not a woman. Technically she's not a woman, oh. is she? But she's definitely a strong yeah. female character in the world of gaming. That voice uh, melts my butter. I tell you now, she's got a sexy robot voice. I love Glados. <laughs> I think... It's just, I... she's so evil. <laughs> she is evil, she's so yeah. Evil. Like, the thing that's coming across in my list is just, I really respect the character. She can't really do much. She's bolted to the ceiling. And at one point, she's yeah. turned into a potato. But do, do you know it's... what? I, 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 what was scene? Have you seen a concept art of that, or what it actually looks like? Yeah, it looks like a woman, like, kind of chained to the ceiling. A Bound lot of symbolism and there. Yeah. Like, Anita, it's kind of like, oh no. You Anita, feel sorry have you heard her. this? Okay. What? I'm just telling Miss uh, Sarkeesian about what they're doing to GLaDOS. Um, but yeah, <laughs> she's a fantastic character. Um, yeah. Fantastically witty as well. Um, she likes to give Great you songs. cake and, um, Great singer. and deadly neurotoxin. Uh, yeah. Tremendous vocal work. Um, and just like, for a character that you barely see, 
Uh, you just hear a lot of, and when you do finally see her, she's just kind of this machine that can't really move much. Uh, she's got yeah. a fantastic presence throughout both the Portal games. She guides you through both. Uh, she's the biggest character in those games because Shell, the character you play as, is kind of, yeah. well, yeah, an empty shell. There um, needs to be a third game. There needs to be a third game. Cause I'd, I'd like, like to see a return. I can't believe that's not on my list. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, glad I yeah, It is one of my favourite. Uh, one of my most, uh, one of my, I say, one of the most memorable, uh, you know, female uh, voiced characters in a video game. And I didn't even think of it. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> well, that's what you have me yeah. on this show for. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, yeah. Oh, damn. I, and and that was at number eight. Jesus, yeah. I'd have, I'd have been higher on my list. That would have been higher on my list. But anyway, okay, okay. It's time now for the number seven. For my number seven, Chris, we've spoke about it already. It's Lara Croft. Oh, but, but only the new Lara Croft. Uh, I didn't like the old Lara Croft. I didn't like. I didn't really like the games. To be honest, I didn't like Tomb Raider one. I didn't like Tomb Raider two. I didn't like the rest of them. But I liked it. The, I loved the reboot. Uh, okay, well, I've got Tomb Raider yeah. on my shelf, still wrapped, so You've sell me on it. You've not played it! Sell me on it. You've not played it! Or why ah, should I? Tell me. No! Why should you? Because it's... It, no, it's, it, it's, it's the story. Uh, it's like a complete reboot. So it's a brand new story of how Lara becomes the Tomb Raider and her character development. She's never killed before. So this is like her first adventure, technically. And there's a, you know, there's a great caster there uh, with her, and she's like, you know... She's quite, she's quite relaxed and that you know she, she's she's just really laid back. But then things happen when she they crash land on this uh, mysterious Japanese island, and she eventually has to learn to kill and like come to terms with what's going on and things. You know, there's betrayals and craziness, and she's literally the first. You know, when she kills the first animal, she feels that guilt. Like you know, she she, didn't, she doesn't really like even killing animals, but eventually she becomes a cold blooded killer at the end of the game after you've slaughtered God knows how many characters. Um, the game so itself is go. really fun to play. As Ladies, well. if but you're she, listening, she, you could become a killer too. She's got a great character arc. Yeah, she's got a great character arc in the game. I think they did a great job. Uh, the definitive edition is still, you know, it's one of the best looking games at the moment. Just so you know, it's uh, about twelve pounds on PSN as well, so you can get it really cheap. It's if you've not played this one, it's definitely the best Tomb Raider game made to date. It wipes the floor with the other Tomb Raiders. She looks like a normal woman, you know. She's not just a pair of breasts with guns, you know. So I really liked, I really like Lara Croft, the new version of her. A uh, little bit pissed off that the next one is exclusive to the Xbox One for a short while. Timed exclusive. Um, we'll get her. We'll timed get her. exclusive. We'll get her. Yeah, because you know Lara Croft and PlayStation go hand in hand, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna have to wait a bit for that. But yeah, I, I gotta say, her in the definitive edition, the, the, the things that happen to her, and oh my god, the things that could happen to her, like the death scenes, uh, are extremely brutal and visceral. Like some of the most like unfortunate death scenes I've seen in a game. Um, so you you'd like you want to look after her almost because the things that happen like make you not want to do that ever again. <laughs> uh, and yeah, yeah, trust me, it it is it is good, and I think it's the best, like one of the best female characters done in a game, and it's done well. I really like it, and uh, yeah, that's why she's. I mean, she's at number seven, uh, and the ones above her are just as good. But that's mine. Okay. So yeah, what's yours? My what's number somebody? seven. Your number seven is one of the first female characters I was ever really impressed by when I was younger, playing a game, and that is Meryl Silverberg from Metal Gear Solid. Oh, Meryl. All right, the Silverberg bit just went over my head for a second, but yeah, it's Meryl. Yes. Meryl was uh, was talking about this the other day. She returned in Resident Evil 4. Not Resident Evil 4, Metal Gear Solid 4, right? Metal Gear Solid 4, yeah. Yeah. No, she's that good she appeared in Resident Evil. Um, yeah. She's Leon. Uh, no, um, I haven't played uh, Metal Gear Solid 4. I've only played 1, 2, and 3. Uh, so I it's from the, the original one. Um, I grew up playing the game, watching her, uh, and she was a really interesting character because on the one hand, she was incredibly tough. Whenever you'd see her in a cell, she was doing different exercises. She was physically yeah. strong. Uh, she could handle a gun. She always carried around this huge desert eagle. But then on the other hand, whenever you spoke to her, she was so naive. She kind of like worshipped Solid Snake. Um, 
And she just loved the idea of him being a war hero. And then he kind of snaps her out of it and says, look, there's nothing good about what I do. I don't like it. I don't really have a place in this world. So I thought she's a really interesting character because on the one hand, yeah, she can defend herself and uh, she's physically capable. But on the other hand, she's just so naive. And not every strong female character has to be uh, confident or clever. Sometimes they can be a bit, you know, not used to the ways of the world. Sometimes they don't have to be the smartest or the uh, the bravest. Sometimes they can be misled because that gave her a chance to grow when she actually got to tag along with Snake and go on his adventure. Yeah. Uh, but well, yeah. I mean, well, from, from my experiences with Meryl, I mean, in the fourth game, she's a bit, a bit of a badass in that one. Lots of shooting, action scenes, but... In the first Metal Gear, right? Oh, the right the moment you, the moment where you try you have to save Snake because depending if you save Snake from the electric, if you resist the electric shock scene, it decides whether Meryl lives or dies. Pretty much in that, yep. in that, and trying to make sure he survived was one of the hardest freaking things to do in a game. I remember putting a sock on my hand, mashing the bloody X button or a circle, or whatever it was, to make sure she stayed alive. But you had to and do like, it because you couldn't that, you couldn't face yeah. the fact of letting Meryl die by your choices yeah and, and not only that there's not many characters uh, uh, that are to do that for like but you, you actually grow to like Meryl throughout and you know game. if you save yeah, Meryl you know. on your next playthrough you get the bandana of infinite ammo and no one can refuse yeah. that yeah no one can refuse that bandana of infinite ammo, uh, ammo. so yeah that was I've got, that's the main reason though we wanted to save was Meryl though we didn't, <laughs> didn't care about the bandana yeah so, so, so yeah. I've included Meryl not because she's uh, the smartest or the most confident, yeah. but be- but because she she has that element of innocence to her, despite being a capable badass, what? which yeah. is something different you, from a lot of the other women in these games. It'd be interesting to see what you think of her in MGS4, uh, if you ever get to play it. But yeah, that's a good number seven. Okay. Okay. Time for number six. And my number six has already been, it was Ellie from The Last of Us. So what's your number six, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> my number six is Dr. Liara Tassoni from the Mass Effect franchise. Uh, Dr. Liara? Liara? Oh, Liara. Is that the if blue can't one? Remember. Yeah, Liara starts out, she's an alien. So again, I have... <laughs> that's so far, a, that's our, the blue one. Yeah. So far, I've had right. a little girl, a robot, and an alien on this list. Uh, yeah. Nice and buried. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah she starts off the game again a bit like Meryl she's a bit naive she's a bit of a shut in she's been an archaeologist and although she's incredibly old she's a couple of hundred years old um, she hasn't really got out much she doesn't really know how to interact with people she's awfully shy and uh, bites her own tongue and says the same thing and it comes off as incredibly cute and that's how she yeah. starts but in the first yeah. game she she is incredibly important you need her because uh, with her abilities to kind of link with your mind, she helps Shepard uh, uncover the Reaper conspiracy and is a huge part of uh, like saving the galaxy in that yeah. first game. But through the sequels, we see this girl who's got some impressive uh, psychic and kind of biotic abilities, which is their kind of telekinesis. Um, you see her go from this sweet girl to one of the hardest baddest information brokers kind of she also like runs an entire criminal empire by the end of it she goes from a little girl to a full on woman just organising her own gangs and armies and it's great to see that transformation and you get to see it over three games so it doesn't just happen and you get to talk to her the entire time you get to see how she goes from that one point to the other I remember because she was pissed off with me for some reason in the third game. I wasn't too sure why. But I was like, I don't remember being like that because she was quite nice to me in the first... I think she, I think she was my love interest in the first game, Liara. That's probably why she was like, pissed nice. off with you by the third because you probably didn't carry it on. You probably got distracted by Miranda. But the thing is... No, I, can't... I was actually distracted by Miranda, but we'll come to that a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't help it now, playing Mass Effect. You know the games that I like to play often... But yeah. I always find myself uh, following the Liara romance storyline because I just think it's so well told, and she's such a nice character. Uh, they do it. They do it tasteful as well. They're really good at doing things like that, Bioware, and I give them credit for it. You know, 
I enjoyed I enjoyed the characters and the way they did the romances and they're not just there to be romanced you know, they do feel human or alien enough to <laughs> actually make a connection with almost but the fact that she's you know, one of the, the most... characters I don't mean for the player yeah you know she's I mean? she's one of the most knowledgeable characters in that huge galaxy and yeah. she just really matures uh, by the end of it and it's just yeah. nice to see a character develop from that she doesn't stay that kind of little girl a lot of characters in video games are just seen as the little girl that have to be saved and you never see anything from that but it's nice to see her grow into like a powerful she's, female yeah, character a full, full on woman a, yeah quite a powerful lady alright well that's that, number 6 ok well now it's time <laughs> and my number 5 Chris yeah. she scares the shit out of me right yeah. I'm not joking mate I, I, I'm, not, I'm only saying it once right Bloody Mary from, uh, <laughs> for, oh god, from The Wolf Among Us. I tell you now, I've never been so scared for, of a woman in a video game before. She makes she a good first rich. impression. She makes a good first impression. Scared the hell out of me what she does to Big B. And that, uh, like, just throughout the game, she's just like, I, I, I didn't even look in the magic mirror again. I, well, I didn't want to. Uh, because <laughs> really? it just scared me. Yeah, like you know, in the thing, I didn't want to look in it because I think she's going to get me. And I, I, I love the whole urban legend and like you know the the, the creepy pastas of you know never say it three times in front of a mirror. And to this day, I still won't do it. I don't know why. It's just it's kind of like always creep me out. And after after playing this game and seeing her in a game, yeah, I don't want to do that. But also, the, one of the best boss battles as well in the game. I know it's mostly a quick yeah. time event, but it was an amazing battle. Yeah, yeah, like, you get your ass really handed creepy. to you. Yeah. Uh, I, I've got to say, Bloody Mary has done really well. Oh God, said it twice. No, say it again. Okie dokie. I'm leaving it. Out. That's it. That's it. She's the badass, and I respect her because she's not the main yeah. bad guy. She's the henchwoman. Yeah. So you know she yeah, does all the dirty she's, work. She's more scarier than the other characters in the game. She is very scary. So yeah, that's that's why she's my number five. Moving on now. I don't want to speak about that anymore. <laughs> number five. <laughs> I have a lot of respect for her. What's yours, Chris? <laughs> Number five is a woman who's been around a long time. I don't think we'll have to talk about her much because as soon as people hear the name, they'll know she gets respect. And that is Samus. Samus Aran oh, so from the Metroid Nintendo's series. Nintendo's lifelong female protagonist. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, it's, she's, uh, yeah. and for the longest time, she's remained the strong and silent type. It's only in the last game where she really started talking. Um, and Snake, Snake in Smash Bros, kind of fancied her. Well, then. <laughs> as well, when she didn't have a suit on. That's uh, why she's a, that's why she's off. above Meryl on the list. Um, yeah. But yeah, the oh. fact the fact that not only has she carried this entire franchise, the Metroid franchise, she's appeared in other games like Smash Brothers. She's my default character in Smash Brothers. Why? Because yeah. she has a gun for an arm. Yeah, gun arm. I don't need anything yeah, else. She has a gun for an arm. Take that, Mario. Uh, yeah, yeah, take I, that, Mario. I don't think I really have to uh, argue a case for Samus. She's been around forever. Yeah. She's been. Yeah, it does feel like that. It does feel like that. Well, that's that's number five. That was nice and quick, and I wanted to get through my quicks. I don't like saying her name. Right. Okay. Number four. Number four. Jill Valentine is my number four, Chris. Okay. See, it's funny because I had Claire Redfield. I like Claire Redfield. Well, the thing is, what I like about you, because I think Jill Valentine's fresh in my head after playing the Resident Evil remaster, and hold I on, really like. Hold on, hold I, on, hold on. During your description of Claire, didn't you say she's better than Jill? Better than Jill. Yeah, I did. You've, you've rated Jill and higher. Explain. I've rated Jill higher. Um, oh, see, I've got to try and dig my way out of this one. <laughs> fucked up my list, then. Looks um, like you turned into a Jill Claire sandwich. I turned into a Jill sandwich. Oh, I see that line. I see Barry could have been on this list if he was a woman. But, <laughs> Barry's uh, on the list just for that line. Barry's on the list. Yeah, uh, he's. I think she's just a really good character. She's the first character I played as in Resident Evil, and I felt safer playing as Jill than I did as Chris. Thought Chris was all right, twat. She was more um, capable than Chris, really, wasn't she? <laughs> yeah, she was more capable in the field, and she was there to do more things. And I see her, her character has changed and it's had more changes than Claire see Claire is still Claire throughout but Jill uh, went from good guy to bad guy technically yeah. she because was a boss battle had... in Resident Evil 5 yeah she, she was a boss battle in Resident Evil 5 and like, Chris is like he doesn't want to hurt her he doesn't want to kill her and uh, she becomes quite a badass and even in the films she becomes a bad person as well 
Um, but like, I enjoy playing as Jill, and I think the, she's she's just a good, caring character. I mean, I could have had Rebecca Chambers, but I think Jill, both Jill and Claire are better than her. Because yeah, Jill had quite a few Resident Evil characters. Jill carried <laughs> Resident Evil One, uh, Resident Evil yeah. Three. Uh, Three. She popped up in Five. Yeah. And there was the DLC for Five where you could play as her as well. I remember playing that. Uh, I think I think I insisted on playing as Jill. I, I don't think I did. Was she in Revelations as Merc, Mercenary Mode? I can't remember. Uh, probably I think everyone. Appeared, everyone I think she appeared in, in Mercenary, mercenary mode. mode for like yeah. But I like playing as Jill. Yeah. She's oh, just and, just and she character. wasn't she in one of the Marvel vs. Capcoms as well? Yes, she was. Yes, she was in Marvel vs. Capcom with Wesker and Chris and the Nemesis. So yeah, that, they they both spinned off into those mo- into those games as well. But yeah, I did, I kind of screwed up my list, um, and Claire should have technically been at number four. And no, but I think I think, the fact that, just... I think the fact that Jill came first and she has spun off into other franchises uh, owns yeah. her a higher place. She is a poster girl for Resident Evil. When you say Resident Evil, you think Jill Valentine. So. Or you know, or Claire Redfield. They're both big characters, and I'd probably <laughs> love them equally to stop so they don't fight. Yeah, love them equally. Great characters, uh, but yeah, your okay. sandwich. Anyway, uh, what's your number four, Chris? My number four. Well, when you were coming up with this list and you were talking about it, you toyed with the idea of putting Morrigan from Dragon Age on it. I did, and I thought I, did, I thought I... about Morrigan because she's an intelligent woman. But scary she, as well. she, she, she's overly... She's an intelligent woman, but she's overly sexualized, to be honest. And yeah. she, she seems to just be something designed by the game designers just to be a sex object. So Morrigan's not on this list. But All I'll tell you what, leather. her, her, her mum is. is. Morrigan's her mother, mom. Flemeth, is the second mother on this list. Do you remember Flemeth at all? Oh man, you know what? No. <laughs> Fantastic. Was she I'm a dragon? She, she's that strong. Was she a character. dragon? Flemeth could turn into a dragon, but she was more interesting when she was a woman because she she first appears as just this old hag in a shack, but secretly she's the player behind all three Dragon Age games that's been moving all the pieces. She's setting everything up in the first game through following her side mission, I found out that the reason why how Flemeth has been alive over all these years is because she raised these daughters, like Morrigan in the woods, and then when they became powerful enough, strong enough, old enough, Flemeth would take over them and corrupt them and live on through their bodies, which is incredibly sinister and evil. So, I decided I can't let that happen to Morrigan. So in the first game, I killed her. And it was an incredible fight because she turned into a giant dragon and it took forever. But I killed Flemeth. Yeah. But then, oh. in the second game, Flemeth tricked me into accidentally bringing her back. So I'm like, wow, well done, Flemeth. And not, <laughs> not to spoil well it, not to spoil it too much, but you know, she plays a significant role in Dragon Age Inqu- Inquisition. So Does yeah, she? definitely Does Flemeth. Your, I've not even got to that bit. She's yet. gonna pop up. Jesus, most significant Christ. woman in the entire Dragon Age franchise. So yeah, Flemeth. Well, that's Flemeth, eh? All right, fair enough. Um, I didn't initially. F- I wouldn't even remembered her, but yeah, that's her what and, she uh, wants. Oregon. That's what she wants. Pretty cool. That's what she wants. Damn, that's she, that's she's quite a. She's one of the other quite uh, you know scary characters on the list, then, isn't she? Because we've got a few villains, haven't we? Uh, but anyway, next to our number three. Number three, Chris. Do you know what my number three is? No, please don't lie me. She was my romance. She was my romance option. Oh, in Fair games. Yes, she was. She, she's also my favourite alien in the entire world. I've had my Tally. <laughs> Tally. 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 Ah, oh, Tally. When she died in Mass Effect Two on my first playthrough, I restarted the game. Nope, you're not allowed <laughs> to do that. I didn't want her to die. I was like, for fuck's sake, good enough strategy. I need to make sure she stays alive. I she kept, kept her dying. Alive. Uh, I know, but I couldn't, and I couldn't live with myself. Uh, she's just a great character. She starts off quite mysterious, and I like it because she's mysterious. You never really see what's under a mask. You kind of do in like I think it was like some kind of uh, like 
picture of something. There's, you know if you, if like. you romance um, Tally, there, he will put a picture by the side of his bed. With but yeah. it's caused a lot of controversy because it was something that was obviously added late to the game because it was just a stock yeah. photo from the internet of some random woman. But they added kind of like yeah. a, a JJ Abrams style Blue. lens flare to cover her face. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really like. I, I, and I still don't really think of her that way in my head. But I just like the whole. She's you know, really stiff. I mean, I, I said to Jacqueline, I said, just hope that aliens don't come to the planet and take me away and I look either like her or Gamora from the uh, um, freaking Guardians of the Galaxy. What's it called? Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I said if Gamora, if Gamora was a video game character, well, she'd be in trouble. Well, uh, <laughs> green. I don't know. Green ladies. I don't know what it is. But Tally. Um, but again, I don't like Shrek. Tally. But Tally. Tally is. I think what I like. I just like the whole mysteriousness of it. Qualified She's mechanic. Well acted, qualified mechanic has a great character arc throughout the three games. Becomes an admiral. Uh, which yeah, that's what I mean. She becomes an admiral of her own fleet. She's a she's a badass, and she was my she was Commander Shepard's badass. Yeah, starts out and, saving uh, her I really own people. Enjoyed Literally, she was in my in my squad all the time. When I could ever have her, it'd be Tally and my best buddy Garrus. Yeah, like, and and to be honest, they could get together as well. And I was like trying to, make, I was like, no man, Tally I'm and moving Garrus on my girl. Put in mind. She she will find romance whether you want her to or not. And one of my favourite scenes from Mass Effect yeah. Three is where Tally actually has a bit too much to drink and she's just in the bar by herself. Um, yeah, but... yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Good, good. But she is, along with Garrus, one of the only characters to appear as a squad member in all three games. I included Liara, yeah. and through DLC, she will appear as a squad member in all three games. But Tally's never in question. Her loyalty is always absolute, so you can't, yeah, you can't deny that yeah, she's in all three lot, games. You know, I did, I did everything I could to help her out in the games as well. So it's, it's like. Um... Yeah, she's she's my number three. I liked her for a lot of other reasons as well. She's great in the squad. And she's a great she's character a great design. Character. She was a fun character as well. She had some fun moments, and she she kind of added that light hearted, you know, she's like a light hearted character in in what was quite a depressing game. You know, the galaxy was going to bloody end, and we didn't you didn't exactly know how he was going to save it, and she still had this like optimistic view of things, uh, and I quite liked her for that. She was a good character. So yeah, that's why she's my number three. Okay, my number three. Now when I say this name, you might not have any idea who it is, okay? We'll see, Chris, we'll see. Okay, number three is Abigail Marsden. Do you know who that is? Marsden rings a bell. It rings a bell. Is that the wife of John Marsden from Red Dead Redemption? It is indeed the wife of John Marsden from Red Dead Redemption. The fact that you you only see this character for the first time at the start of the third act of the game um, shows shows how strong a character is that you only see her for the end portion of the game, and I've included her as my third best female character of all time because you spend the entire game (laughs) thinking you, you spend the entire game thinking she's just some prize to be won back for John, some object uh to save from the clutches of the uh. US agents and then when like you finally Princess get Peach, there basically. when you ride home she slaps the shit out of you and shouts at you says where the hell have you been this is a woman John Marsden is a great story for him because it's all about his redemption he used to run with gangs and now he's trying to go yeah. straight in the west which is no easy thing but Abigail was right there with him she used to be a, a whore in that gang with him um uh She started in a really low place. The guys used to throw her around. They said they all had her. Uh, But together with John, they made a break for it. They decided... That's kind of a nice love story in a way, isn't it? They decided to try and make it in the West, which is no easy thing to do. And she's she's an incredibly tough character. She speaks her mind. She won't take no for an answer. But yet, she's also feminine. She's a strong female character. She was imprisoned in a ladies cooking school <laughs> she's not afraid to be feminine yeah. but she's not afraid to be tough and she is by far of all the characters that I've put on this list and the two that I've still got to list off she yeah. appears as the most realistic she is a fantastic yeah. representation for women in games she's Actually, not trying yeah. to, she's not trying to be a super badass she's not Samus she's not got a gun for an arm she's not Lara Croft uh, killing everything um 
she's not a violent character. You can play as her in the multiplayer and shoot as much as you want, but she's not an action-packed character. She's a realistic huh. woman, and she's a tough one at that. And for that, she gets a third that's, place. That's, I think Rockstar needed to work on that in GTA, to be honest. Um, they did, if they can do it well in, in you know, Red Dead Redemption, I can't see why they didn't have a character like that in GTA. I still think they should have, really, rather than Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> if I could replace Franklin with a female character, I would. I didn't like his character. I thought it was just a, just very stereotypical, almost. Like, every other character... I, I've already done that story, more or less, in GTA 3. Well, no, not GTA, no, GTA San Andreas. I mean, if Rockstar can write, know, done it. can write characters like Abigail, done it in Saints Row. You know, if they can write so, characters like yeah. Abigail, I'd love to see them write uh, a main character yeah. as a woman and see where they'd go they, with that. They need to, they should do that, and I don't know why they haven't. It doesn't make sense, but so oh, yeah, good, good character choice for number three. Okay, time for number two. And my number two, Chris. Yes, is. Is is the only Final Fantasy character that's been mentioned so far? Okay, okay. <laughs> and it's not, and it's not Aerith or whatever her freaking name is from Seven because I never played Seven and I wasn't really into Seven when I was a little younger. I, oh, I know who Don't it like is. that. Sue me. Yeah, you know who it is. It's one of the game first games I ever fell in love with, and also one of the games that most people don't like in the Final <laughs> Fantasy series. It's Yuna from Final Fantasy X and X yeah, too. Sue me. Yeah, and uh, ten to well, we uh, oh no, that's not on my list at all. So just ten for now. <laughs> ten two was a bit silly. Well, go on, explain. I yourself. liked Yuna. I liked Yuna in Final Fantasy Ten because it was just also the first like big game I bought with my own money. And Titus, Titus, whatever his freaking name was, it was cool. It was alright, but Yuna was a really deep, interesting character. She was a summoner that was able to summon aeons. Yeah, everyone looked up to her. Because literally, it was her job to end sin. She was going on a pilgrimage to go over there to sacrifice herself to stop sin, and that's a lot to take on. And sin, the giant the monster, by the that, way, not just the abstract concept of being wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you, know, yeah, sin is like a big whale or whatever it is, and like the this, the, the whole character thing is, and, and obviously Tidus. I don't even know what his name is properly but he comes in into her life uh, you know which is completely out of the ordinary you know he just ends up there saying from Zanakund everyone's like ah Zanakund's dead what are you on about he's so drunk uh, and he ends up falling in love with her and him and her him and then things go a little bit crazy where she's like almost forced into a marriage with Seymour Ugh. that bastard I hated him Seymour oh god that arsehole and I hated that moment. I was so angry. And it made me really passionate because I wanted to save her from this dickwad. <laughs> and she was just she was just such a great character. And even to the very end, like they didn't want to lose each other. And it was just a really nice story between them. I and mean, the there fact, was that yeah, the odd fact moment. That Titus where they... in the end chooses to sacrifice himself so she can live. Yeah. Yeah. Says something you know, about I, her I place in the world. Scene where they're just stood there laughing together. Oh, that's awful. Uh, which is kind of like a <laughs> cringeworthy scene. But it's just him trying to cheer her up. I mean, at the end of the day, she's on the way, she's on the way knowing full well that she's probably going to die at the end of this. She's not going to live a full life. And it's just kind of like a great story. And it's my final, my, my favourite Final Fantasy game. I love it. I, I, put, I played that game multiple times. And it's also coming to the PS4. And I can't piss him wait to play out on the big screen again. It's coming. HD remaster. It's been uh, confirmed. And it's also It came out for the Vita a little while ago and PS3, but I did read that it's meant to be coming to PS4, so I can't wait. And yeah, she's one of my favourites. I love the summons. I love to think like when you could summon anima, like her own animations are really cool. So she's like literally the person that always had in my party. And then in number and, two, she ran yeah. away and became a singer. Yeah, see, number two... See, it's only Yuna from 10. Number 2, it got stupid. I don't know what they was thinking when they made that game. And I think after 10, Final Fantasy went downhill. Like, 13 was okay, but it wasn't as good as 10. And it just got a bit silly. So basically, you know, I like 10. 10 is my favourite one of my favourite Final Fantasy games. And Yuna was my favourite female character from that game. I think, you know, it's just a great story. So, yeah, that's my number two. So, what's yours, Mr. Chris? Fair enough. Number two is the last of the women on my list who is technically not a woman. 
Um, she's not a woman. Again, God, much one. like my number 10, it's because she's not quite old enough yet. She's actually still a little girl. And that is Clementine right. from The Walking Dead. Oh, Clementine. Yeah, I suppose I can understand why she's on the list, but I've not played The Walking Dead games. Well, All I know is it's really this little should. girl that you take under, your wi- take under your wing at the beginning and you try and did she protect her? You like become her father figure almost? Or yes, you feel like that's first, all, I, all I know about her. In the first game, you play as Lee looking after Clementine, and she just just start as this very scared little girl. She's scared of you when she first sees you. Uh, she hides up in a treehouse, and but she's smart enough to realise there's a walkie-talkie in the house, and she's got a walkie-talkie in a treehouse, and she will yeah, talk to yeah. you. She'll she initiates first contact, and she goes from being this. Uh, incredibly innocent young girl to being one of the baddest motherfucking characters in gaming Clementine becomes so cold um, by the end of the series Uh, she's she's been both uh, Walking Dead season 1 and 2 which not many characters end up that way because a lot of people die a lot of people die in those games but she's stronger than all of them because she makes it through and she just goes from this completely innocent little girl to this empty husk who only has one thing left and that's the will to survive at one point uh, after like a dog tries to attack her uh, she has to because people don't trust her because she's got a bite mark on her arm she has to suture up her own arm in a oh, shed damn. with garden supplies whilst fighting off walkers. And that's. I need to play this game. She is so cold and so. she You can say some really terrible things as her and become so threatening in, in the second game. But then when you play, replay the first one, she started out so innocent. She goes on the biggest arc of any of these characters yeah, that I've so mentioned. I mean, she's like a little innocent girl at the beginning. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be, oh, shocked. You'd be shocked to see to where she goes. I need to play it. I mean, season one and two is on uh, PS4, and I've played Wolf Among Us, and I loved it, so I'm going to have to give it a go. The fact that we get to see it from two perspectives, uh, because you play as Lee in the first game, and you watch after her, but certain characters become separated, certain characters die, or certain characters we just don't hear from again. The second game all takes takes place... Uh, with you playing as Clementine, it's all from her perspective. Really, and it's great to oh, right. to study that character in the first one, but then to actually get to become them in the second one. Almost like The Last of Us with Ellie, isn't it? You you see Ellie from a different perspective for most of the game, and then you play as her, and then there's like that whole new perspective. So I suppose that yeah, you can compare that in mechanic. It's interesting actually watching someone. Let me tell you, Ellie's got then... nothing on Clementine. And he's got nothing on Clementine. Well, that's why she's your number two, Chris. Yep. That's why she's your number two. Anyway, it's time. <laughs> number one, Chris. It, we're here. We're at the end of the list. We're at the end of the list. These are our number one ladies of gaming. Now, mine, Chris, is a certified badass. Probably the most badass lady on this list. And probably the most badass lady in all of gaming. She wears guns for heels <laughs> she has lollipops she has magical powers she's a witch she's a freaking badass it's Bayonetta oh my god Bayonetta is awesome and uh, I'm so glad that they, there is a second game and the things you do the things she does are just incredible and she is just so cool Dante Dante <laughs> screw Dante Bayonetta is so much better uh, you know the, the moves she does. It's very sexy. She struts. She's a very powerful character. You know, and I, I just love her. So people say she's over sexualized. Say so what? That's the way that the, they've created her. That's the way they see her. And, and just to let so you know that the, one of the people that created Bayonetta is a woman. You know, and of course in Asia they have they they, they do things a lot different over there. But I like Bayonetta because she's sexy, but she's dangerous, and she. would Cut your dick off in a second. Yeah, <laughs> she, she don't. She don't mess around. This woman, um, she's like, she's just really cool though. She is like an action hero that is so over the top, but at the same time just so damn cool. It's it's 
you know, it's, you, there's no other female game character that I I hold in the same at the same level as Bayonetta. When I first played the first game, I was like, holy shit! You know, not only was it fun to play, she was just so damn cool. The things she does, I and mean, then in Bayonetta two, which I'm still playing now, she is just amazing. And it's very she's got very comical as well, very funny character. So the line she comes out with and that, and you know, she's got a posh English accent. And she's just she's just lovable, but at the same time extremely dangerous. You know, out of all the out of all the people, uh, if I want in a bar fight, it'd be Bayonetta. I know Yuna can summon Anima or a giant thing, but Bayonetta can summon a giant dragon that will eat Anima. So I don't care. You know, it's it's she's just an awesome character. The things she can do, the abilities she has, she is one of the coolest female uh, fighters I've played as. Uh, Didn't she appear in Smash one, as well? Though. I think she's great. Smash Bros. No, I I begged for it. I was oh. like, please put Bayonetta in. You've just you got we you, you know you've got Bayonetta two as an exclusive. You'd be stupid not to have her in Smash Bros. She's not there. Uh, so whether that should end up being DLC, Foolish I don't Nintendo. know because she could fit into that. She could fit into Smash Bros. She probably couldn't fit into Mario Kart. That'd be silly. But I you know I think they could do more with her, and they should do. And whether they'll do a third game, I don't know. Will the third game be on Nintendo, or will it be on all platforms? Again, don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, well, Platinum Games, who made you know made the first one, it was such a good game, and it just it's one memorable, and it didn't sell as well as it should have. And a lot of people didn't give it a chance. I mean, there's so many people out there that love Devil May Cry, but Bayonetta is a better game. I don't. I, I don't argue that. So I'm blue in the face. Bayonetta is better than Devil May Cry, and the way the way where Devil May Cry is going, it's going in a silly direction. And Bayonetta, and you know, from the first game to the sequel, is just like. I mean, do you remember Devil May Cry two? How bad that was after the first game. Like Bayonetta two is the opposite of that. It's like wow, and then holy shit, wow. <laughs> That's the level of wow it is. So yeah, man. Number one, Bayonetta. Beat that. I will that. I will beat that. <laughs> My number one lady of gaming. Well, let's look at the women we've already discussed. The the tough, capable, physically strong, Pac-Man. mentally strong. Uh Kasumi. My number one lady <laughs> is none of these things. Nope. She's not she's not strong. She's not strong not mental. mentally, physically. <laughs> um, she's not particularly willful. Uh, not particularly bright, but oh, she's a cutie, and oh, she's so kind and helpful, and she is the first Kirby. lady, the first lady of video gaming, and she is in Smash. It is, of course, Princess Kirby. Peach. Oh, no. oh, oh Princess yeah. Peach. Princess I Peach I is the Peach. number one woman number of gaming, one. and let me tell you why. Bayonetta. Let me tell you Bayonetta why. Son. Bitch slapper. <laughs> let me tell you why. No, she won't, because she's not in Smash. Um, but Princess Peach. <laughs> I've talked about realistic women. I've talked about strong women. I've talked about so many different types of women, but none of them have had a lasting legacy like Princess Peach. She has been in so many games. The Mario series. She has been in the Mario Kart series. She's played tennis. She's played all the sports. She's played golf. She's an accomplished woman. And she even got her own game in Super Princess Peach, where she saved the Mario brothers. But I'll tell you this. She's not even Mario's original girlfriend. No, 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 no. It wasn't Peach you. Was, it wasn't Peach you were saving in Donkey Kong. It was Mario's original girlfriend, Pauline. But no, no, no. What? As soon as Mario saw Peach, Pauline was out the window. Peach is the number one. Did I mention she rules an entire kingdom, the Mushroom Kingdom? Any of the women on your list, <laughs> you know, royalty, manage a kingdom of toads. You know, the most annoying race known to man. She manages oh, them. Toads, cool. And you know what? Every she- now and then, she bakes you a cake. And she will send you hearts and coins because she's nice. You don't have yeah, to be she's tough. Getting... You don't have to be badass. You can be tough. And she's so lovable. The main villain she's a of the liability. series. The main villain of the series, Bowser, is also in love with her because she's, she's an amazing a woman. No, she's not. She's a fish of frustration. Bayonetta, look after herself. She would. She won't let some bloody Bowser bloke come along. She'd kick him in the balls. You know why Bayonetta has to look out for herself? <laughs> Because nobody wants to look after her. Yeah. She's just a mean bitch. Oh. Everybody, everybody oh. loves Princess Peach. She is the number one woman in gaming. No no other characters have appeared in so many games as she has. Everybody loves her. Princess no, Peach. Suppose, yeah. She's a cliche. She's been in everything, isn't she? But, you know, not every woman has to be tough. 
<laughs> she, but this right, incredibly just... weak, incredibly silly, very pink, very pink, very girly game. This character has appeared in so many games, more than any of the other women yeah. on this list. Well, that's an interesting number one, Chris. It's an interesting number one. You can't deny Princess the power of Princess Peach. Peach. And who the hell's Rosalind then? Who's the other one? Uh, there's Rosalina and there's Princess Daisy. Yeah, who's that? Then? Oh, do you know why Rosalina's so so bad? Rosalina is Peach's daughter. Yeah. Oh yeah, one more mother on the list. But wait, hang on, take that, mother. But ain't Rosalina going out? <laughs> ain't that going out with Luigi? Nope, is that's Daisy. That's Daisy, Princess Peach's Daisy. best friend. Oh. oh yeah, Nintendo gals. Oh, oh. Nintendo gals. Oh, they need to do. Right, all right then. There you go. There's your game, right? They need to do a Charlie's Angel style Princess Peach game. No, no, no. I'll tell you the Princess you Peach game no. I want to see. We need a real time strategy on. game set in the Mushroom Kingdom. We need the Bowser Bowser <laughs> team invading, and we need her leading her kingdom to victory. She's a figurehead you can get behind. Like plant, go, Princess like Peach. Go. Plants v Zombies. <laughs> Princess Peach. Oh, the Peach that, Rebellion. Anyway. That, that was that was great. Viva anyway, Peach. that's our top ten. It's Viva, P- Viva Bayonetta! That was our top 10 ladies in gaming. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this. It's, it's a bit different and it's had some good bants, uh, my good buddy Chris. Go, Peach. Anyway, as always, as Peach. Bah, piss off. <laughs> as always, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, big top 10. And we've got some more top 10s coming soon. And uh, anyway, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll see you all soon. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bayonet is better than Peach. Peach. Bloody Peach. Bayonetta. Oh, God. <laughs>